Hi, thank you very much for joining me. So for everybody that's been following me lately, thank you very much, I really appreciate it. Just before, let's just add some royal cumin, some shahi cream cumin, some people call it. A couple of pinches of that and a couple of pinches of mustard seed because we've got a nice vegetable curry coming up today. So nice and light on the spices. So thank you very much for everybody who's um, been watching the channel lately. It's uh, been a bit of a mismatch of different styles of videos. Thanks for everybody that watched uh, that 43 minute curry I made. And just let the camera roll um, the other night. So what we have there is some cabbage that we're just going to fry up. Now we're just going to add some salt to that as well. And just stir fry the cabbage so no onions in this curry. So we're just going to sweat those onions, sorry, not onions, that cabbage down. We'll come back in about three to five minutes. So as I was saying, um, yeah, lots going on at the moment. I'm in a new house and you can hear the traffic that's from the motorway so we're just off the motorway we've got double glazing so it's not a problem unless you're in a nice spacious shed and it's all mine very good for storage very good for outdoor cooking it's practically outdoor as you can see um, so we're in the process of setting up this nice home that we've recently moved into and I should think there's going to be some really super exciting changes that I'm excited about anyway um, coming up in the near future I've got a seven a seven ring gas cooker being delivered in a week I have my own private kitchen this time but it's still absolutely awesome to cook outside um, and by the way this is 18 inch diameter parai here that I've been um, using quite a lot on the videos I've just even if uh, you don't fill it it really does an excellent job of cooking curries so I should think if you can hear me from all the um, noise of that steamy cabbage but in a few weeks, a month or two possibly, things are going to settle down. I've got so many interesting ideas for recipes that are coming up. Next Monday I'm going back to Woodlands Restaurant Bar and Grill to do some uh, cooking with the chef there. That was a very popular video. Thank you very much for everybody that watched that. He's a uh, unique, unique is my friend up there. So um, stay tuned on Monday for plenty of uh, behind the scenes restaurant cooking. So the last, I would say, six or seven weeks have been absolutely chaotic in terms of you know moving out of one house into another house and wanting to do things properly first time so nice slowly and surely unpacking of everything so many things that we've had to purchase and this that and the other so it's been a very uh, sporadic set of um, videos lately you know a bit on the cooking class a couple of adverts, a couple of really big batch curries, and today we've got something unique as well. Just waiting, I'm, I'm actually treating this cabbage like onion, and what's prompted this um, 
recipe is necessity really. Uh, this is what I've got at home. So courgette, okra, aubergine, baby aubergine, cabbage, ginger and garlic. I'll put all the um, ingredients and quantities in the description of the video as always. So some people were saying, oh, why, why didn't you speak on the last video? I just let it run. I, I um, narrated it um, visually on the screen. And uh, yeah, it was just like a really busy day. But I really wanted to make something substantial. So I think I made about 15 batches of uh, butter paneer. So I'm super excited to get my kitchen all sorted. I won't be cooking it in it until it's exactly the way I want it. You can see my pan rolling around there now. If anybody's seen any of my uh, previous videos, I usually have a ring, a wok ring that goes on that stabilizes it, but that's okay. So I hope everybody's good. It's uh, great that the UK certainly is getting back to normal after COVID. I know a lot of um, other countries are a lot more stricter and they're still in panic and you know the, the numbers of COVID cases are very high. So blessings to the whole world. Let's hope everything gets back to normal. So in with the ginger and garlic paste. Need a little bit more oil because that was a whole cabbage. A little bit just to sizzle that ginger and garlic off. So it's a very different type of recipe here today. All cooked from scratch, super healthy, 100% vegan. Something a little bit uh, innovative. We'll sizzle the garlic will return. Time really flies. It's really good to use every day to the best you can be and not waste time. My daughter now is almost seven months of age and uh, yeah, she's coming along lovely. So bullet chilies just went in there, a good number, nice and spicy. So I hear the older you get, the quicker the time goes. So it's a bit of a shame, isn't it? So at least 1,100 videos in the last five years. I think this time, five years ago, I had 48 subscribers. I know there's uh, newer channels and, and channels with far less videos. There's a lot more subscribers. You know, I'm no video editor. You know. I'm the same on cam camera as I am off camera. Love it or hate it. <laughs> Looking like a really good stir fry, but we are going to turn it into a sauce. A touch more oil, I think. We're getting quite a lot of lossy or oil evaporation. We're going to add the aubergine. There's a small bag of baby aubergine there. You can see it's um, oxygenized. I chopped it about 10 minutes ago, maybe 20. So the Italians will rub it as soon as they cut, cut the aubergine or the eggplant or brinjal, whatever you want to call it. They rub it with salt and it stops it oxygenizing. It doesn't 
impair the taste if you don't rub it with salt. Uh, I love a little bit of food trivia. And I haven't bought a new gas bottle for this burner for so long. I really, really hope I don't run out of gas. So that aubergine needs to soften. We'll come back in a few minutes. Adding a little water. A little water is quite a lot when you're using a 18 inch karai. Probably about 600 millilitres. Soften the aubergine. Make sure everything's scraped off the sides. So I'll be making another base gravy um, in a few weeks. I haven't had a curry made in base gravy apart from going out to eat at restaurants for a while. So looking forward to doing a little bit of um, BIR or British Indian restaurant style. So next we're going to add powdered spices. Red chilli, and Chennai Masala or Madras curry powder from Taste of India. Not overly spicy, but ooh, I can smell those uh, great curry, classic curry smell wafting up as soon as that touched the hot ingredients. So all available on Taste of India, if you didn't already know. Sizzle that all the way, aubergine softening, cook out those raw spices, make sure everything's mixed first. And um, that cabbage has really reduced, sort of substituting the onions. No particular reason, as I said. It's a recipe out of necessity. Some of the best food you can cook sometimes is what you've got left in the house. I'll come back in a minute or two. They're nice and steamy. So in with tomato puree now. You can tell how soft they want the aubergine. I'm adding about two cups, so about 300 gram of tomato puree and just some water to dilute that. Maybe around half a litre. Just stir that in. We're going to get a rich gravy now. It's very steamy. Really important when you're using tomato puree, it can be quite sweet. Different manufacturers or brands of tomato puree have different levels of sweetness. It's uh, all about finding your right brand, really. Some people say that Lidl's tomato puree is the best. So, Lidl's. If you're watching from Asia, you're not going to have Lidl's yet, but certainly in the United States, I believe it's um, emerging as a supermarket. I'm using a brand called Foodie, which comes in four kilo tins. So regardless, anyway, it really needs cooking properly. And if it gets really um, thick, just add, add water just to prolong the cooking, make sure all those flavours combine. We'll come back in about five minutes. Pretty high temperature, a lot of steam, but you can see the oil starting to split now. What's really interesting, you know, there's a lot of popular videos, a lot of popular YouTubers with this um, type of food. But if you do something different, 
how is anybody going to know? Because most most of the things, if you or I go onto YouTube, you want to watch something particular, who's ever going to type? I'd like a vegetable karahai with a cabbage base instead of onion. I'm not going to find it. So it's really hard sometimes um, to describe your dishes. Uh, essentially, this is a, a vegetable karai or four different vegetables. On the flip side, if I was doing a chicken tikka masala or uh, a lamb vindaloo, totally searchable, instant. The results come up. You can have a look at the thumbnail and pick the desired um, curry that you want to cook. So the thing about being a little bit avant-garde or experimental, if you like, is quite often no one would possibly even conceive of the recipes you're making. So they don't search for it. I suppose that's where subscribers come into it. Some people have got 3 million subscribers, but they've only got 27,000 um, views, average views on a video. So a lot, most, of, most of the subscribers, they don't watch. They don't watch even um, what they subscribe to, which is interesting. All right. So we've got some courgette here. Two courgette. Going to boil those courgettes in that nice gravy now for say about 10 minutes. Smelling really good, not over spiced at all. So a lot of people in India who follow um, the Jain religion or Orthodox um, Orthodox Hindus don't eat onion or garlic because it invigorates the libido or in layman terms makes you horny so when you're a devout person wanting to be very spiritual the last thing you need is anything that you believe to make you horny <laughs> so this could be a really good alternative if anybody um, that follows that just use cabbage instead of onion cheap and cheerful and it will do the job. We're going to be cooking a magnificent curry anyway as you're going to see the proof is in the pudding. That's been reducing down for about eight minutes. A lot of the water's evaporated. A really quite thick sauce there with the aubergine, the cabbage, the tomato and the courgette. Next a nice chopped okra, bindi, and we're going to add a little bit more water. So okra last because it cooks in about, you know, with this quantity in a pan like this, we want six minutes to cook, and that will help thicken the sauce up as well. A lot of people don't like okra because they say it's slimy. Personally, it doesn't bother me. It's one of my favourite vegetables. Um, but it really thickens sauces. That's why they put it in gumbo in um, the deep south of the United States because it really thickens everything up. So that's becoming a really nice, well cooked mix of veg here. Come back in about three minutes once that okra starts to cook. So it's almost starting to smoke. I'm sorry I said this was 100% vegan but we've got some full fat Greek style yogurt being poured into that so if you are vegan don't use it. 600 mils 
make sure we can get it all out and give that a good stir. So when you first put the yogurt in, it really changes the colour. And then when you stir it all in, it starts to get a bit darker. The longer you cook it, it'll get darker. So that yogurt is really going to make it super tasty. Matter of preference, really. Some people aren't into the more creamy sauces. But the good thing, when you're doing big batch, if you use cream, it would only last about three days in the fridge. If you're using yogurt, it'll last longer. So I cook such big batches. Actually, this is on request of my missus. I cook big batches. What I usually do is put them in um, takeaway containers. I put four or five in the fridge and the remainder in the freezer. So the ones I put in the fridge, they're microwavable in four minutes and the ones I put in the freezer you can just simply put them back into the microwave for 10 minutes. And they're ready to go. I remember doing all those uh, micro meal reviews not too long ago. So we've got some seedless limes here. Skews fingers. Like I said, I've moved house. I don't know where my, my lime juice extractor is. So that lime is really going to cut through that yogurt really nicely and add this little zest to it. So one lime, two limes. So we're coming right to the end now. I thought I'd have a chit chat because the, the other video was so silent. I'm adding a good bowl of coriander, I think there's nearly two bunches there. And I'm going to add some nice taste of India garam masala, a good tablespoon of that, and stir it all up. So there it is, a nice made from scratch, super healthy, lightly spiced but totally flavoursome okra, aubergine and courgette curry and I'd say there's about eight to ten portions there 